we're gonna start we're gonna start baby all right ready yeah ready set go all right so first things first we want to talk to luther in the movie theater so that we can get his quest he's telling us to go to the secret lab to get the blueprints now we're gonna run to the to a sim quarter so that we can talk to polynomial yeah that is her name it's polynomial and she is both going to give us details on the secret lab and she is going to give us the paradise island reality tv show quest if you are very fast at reading you can read her dialogue but uh i am gonna just jam through it Alrighty, so this is maybe one of the harder parts is i'm gonna have to tokyo drift my way to paradise island I am very bad at the airship controls, and I mess this part up regularly. Oh, come on. Yes! Holy shit, that was so good! <laughs> Not to brag, but that was a really good airship. Wow! I don't know why I'm calling it an airship. It's an airboat. You get the idea. Alrighty, so we are in the reality TV show right now. You can see the timer in the bottom left corner, and like any good show participant, we are going to sleep through the entire thing. For sure. We won't be able to sleep quite through the entire thing. Our character will wake up partway through. And there she goes. All right, we're going to sleep through the rest. Because um, like anybody, she can only get a healthy eight hours of sleep. All right, two, one. All right, there we go. Cool. Pritchard says that we lost and that we don't get any of that sweet money. And I don't care because I have 14,000 bucks in my pocket. All right, so that's the reality TV show done. Now it is on to the vampire quest. So we're going to try and get to the bayou via airboat. Or we're, we're going to try and do it without crashing. God damn it. The, I cannot adequately express to you guys how dog shit these airboat controls are. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I've had much worse airboat runs than that. All right, so we pick up the quest here from from Claw, Craw Dad Clem. Craw Dad Clem is his name. He tells us that his brother Boo is infected with vampirism and something needs to be done about it. So we're going to go all the way to the mausoleum. Still running all the way to the mausoleum to go get Bayou Boo. That's his brother. Okay. Still still running. We have to go through this creepy ass crypt. All right, there he is. There's Bayou Boo. As you can see, he looks like a fucking like hot topic Mogoth right now with the cape and like I guess he has fangs and stuff. I don't know. Honestly, I think Bayou Boo is a bit of a baddie, if I'm being honest. Bayou Boo is a bit of a baddie. Bayou Boo, that's fun. That's fun alliteration. All right, anyway, we've unlocked his chains. We've, we've broken his shackles, right? But we still need to cure his vampirism. Our character does not know how to cure vampirism. I know, but she doesn't. So we have to talk to Mambo Lao. And she tells us that it's cured with uh, vast quantities of chocolate. So, okay, cool. Fortunately, I have pre-prepared a chocolate bunny. So I just have to go back and give it to him. Um, generally, Mambo does not spawn in the graveyard. We had to very carefully plan... Come on. We had to very carefully plan this route so that she did spawn in the graveyard. All right, and there we go. You can see that Bayou Boo is no longer a vampire. But he does keep the cape. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. Fuck. That's the whole... That's right. On previous weeks, we had a lengthy discussion about how the cape is actually what causes his vampirism. I think that's probably true. All right, so there is a motorcycle. Yep, right here. I have prepared this motorcycle ahead of time so that we can very quickly get to King Tower to take the blueprints. Come on. All right, there we go. I am also very bad at driving the motorcycle. I am bad at all the vehicles in this game, <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. Alrighty, so we're going to sleep on the bench out here until 3 a.m. because the secret lab has a security system that uh, is active at all times except between 3 and 4 a.m. All right, perfect. Perfect timing. All right, we want to go to the executive office. The villain in this game, I feel like I should point out, his name is Daddy Big Bucks. Now, I do want to enunciate that properly. The villain in this game is named Daddy Big Bucks. I, look, I didn't come up with the name, okay? Don't, don't bring it up with me, okay? All right, we want to sleep until 5 a.m. Because the next person we need to talk to only spawns in Sim Quarter at 5 a.m. All right. Overslept a little bit on that, but. 
Alright, Luther should be right in front of the museum, I believe. Yes, there he is. Alright, and he is going to need blueprints. Perfect. He's very upset with his dad. Alright, so now we want to ride up to the carnival. We've completed the first three missions that I had described before. So we did the reality TV show mission, we did the bayou mission, and we did the secret lab. All right, and I'm going to abandon my motorcycle here, and we're gonna run up to the carnival. All right, so now we're gonna intentionally get ourselves captured. I don't know how this makes sense within the lore of the game, but go the fuck off. And we are reunited with Harlan King from the beginning of the game. And we have to get his relationship up to 30, which I do by button mashing, which, ooh, is not working out for me right now. There we go, all right, we're good. Okay, now we get a very long cutscene. And we are what? Six minutes in? Not so bad. I don't think it's great if I'm being honest. Um, all right, let me see. So, all right, we're gonna lamp until 3 p.m. and then talk to Max and Zizzle. Okay. All right, so after this, we are gonna sleep. Oh, okay, all right, shit, shit, shit. We wanna go to Zizzle, Max. Club Zizzle is an area in the game where characters, uh, Zizzle is an area in the game where characters very commonly spawn, uh, so it's a great area to um, meet specific characters that you need to talk to for quest objectives. But they are only there at specific times, in this case, 3 p.m., right? Yes. So fortunately our magic lamp has a toilet in it. Alright, great, 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 great. We're, we're doing fantastic right now. This is all going... Very well. So at 3 p.m. we're gonna get out of here and we're going to talk to Maximilian Moore. Maximilian Moore is a doctor and he is going to be our, I guess, date? I guess he's our date to the Atlantis premiere party. Or he's just our buddy. I don't know. So he should be right up here. Yes, there he is. However, he does not have any tickets to the, uh, he does not have any tickets to the premiere, so we have to get tickets, which we can get by talking to Lily Gates, who is right in here. Now, she will only give us tickets if we are popular enough, which we are. Uh, our character is very popular. There we go. All right. We were able to pre-prepare a high relationship with the other characters before the start of this run. So that part is made very easy. And in any percent run, that part is actually very difficult. Okay, great. So now uh, Maximilian will go to the premiere with us. And the premiere is going to happen right here by this movie theater. However, the premiere does not load unless we load Glasstown from an external loading zone, like so. And there we go. All right, so now at the premiere, Daddy Big Bucks, the villain of the game, Daddy Big Bucks, is going to go anime sicko mode on all of our asses. He's going to warp in like a fucking, yeah, shonen like villain, doing a Dougie on our ass. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Okay. And that's that. Oh, that's right. We have to talk to Harlan. Harlan's going to say that Daddy Big Bucks took over all of Minneapolis using, uh, using, I don't know, land claims as his weapon. All right. So now we got to build that time machine and close this sucker out. So Sue Pranova, that's her name. She is going to spawn down here in Urbania, I think at six o'clock. Yes. Oh, fuck. So I am going to have to lamp for just a little bit, just like half an hour. Sue is going to be our inventor who builds the um, time machine. Yep, there she is. Perfect. And she's going to want 10 nuclear... Fuck me. All right. I was supposed to give her the fuel rods then, but I'll just talk to her again. It's fine. There we go. All right, cool. So she's got them. And then our contractor, fortunately, spawns right here. Okay, I was supposed to give him $10,000, but I mashed through the dialogue. All right, we're good. All right, great. So now we just need to collect the time machine from them at their workshop, which is right over here. There it is. Look at that. You ever thought you could build a time machine in like two hours? You love to see it. All right, what are we at? We're at like 10 minutes? Okay, this is looking good. This is looking very good. 
All right, so we've got the time machine. Now we just need to get the date that we need to travel back to. Now, I know that we need to go to December 31st, 1870. However, my character does not know that. Okay, okay. This was a bad idea. This might have been a bad idea. Bringing the motorcycle down. No, you know, it's fine. All right, Giuseppe is going to tell us the date, and we are almost done. We are so close to being done. We just have to go back to King Tower. Yep, 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 yep. We just have to go back to King Tower, go to the top, activate the time machine, and then we are done. All right, here's King Tower. Now we just have to go to the roof. We're almost there. Oh, this is good. This is looking fucking good, you guys. I haven't been looking at the clock this whole time, but this is looking fucking good. Yep, yep, yep. December 31st, 1870. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, boy. 1050. Okay, the problem is we have a really fucking long cutscene after this. I don't know what our final time is going to look like. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. We did it. Apparently, Daddy Big Bucks' plan was he was making a land claim on all of Minneapolis with a flag, and then my character's plan was to build a whole-ass time machine and just take the flag away. I don't think that's how land claims work, but I'm not smart enough to dispute it. Okay, he gets arrested for, I don't know, temporal crimes, I guess? Um, Alright, and there it is. We have the ending cutscene. This ending cutscene is so fucking long, it's insane. And timing for this run does not technically end until the end of this cutscene. The Game Boy Advance version of the game doesn't have a cutscene this long, but the DS version does. It sucks. You'd think the speedrun would just end here, to be honest. I would think that, but apparently not. And I, you know what? I play by the rules. It's how I do, you know? It's fine. It's fine. It. It's why I run in the DS category instead of the GBA category. You know what I mean? But like, look at this. It's still going. <laughs> it's weird. In the DS version, it shows these panning shots over all the different environments in the game, right? Whereas in the GBA version, it's just like one little walkthrough in the final area. And I wonder why they did it differently. It could be because the DS version technically has more characters and they couldn't fit them all into the environment. Um, or maybe they wanted to show off more of the game world. It is a nicer ending cutscene. It's just longer, and I, I resent that. Okay, time! Time! 12.38! Let's go! Let's go! Oh! Yeah, baby! Oh, you love to see it! You, I'm sorry, I yelled at, I'm I'm like peeking the microphone right now. I'm sorry. Let's go. We cut 20 seconds off this bitch. Let's go. Oh my God. Oh, you love to see it.